Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this glorious summer's day here in the woods, the outdoor chapel of Saugatuck Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, right here in Westport, Connecticut. My name is Willie Salmond. I'm a member of this lovely congregation. I'm joined this morning by Joan Kavanagh, who will read the, the lesson, and by Ann Patterson, one of our deacons, who will give the reflection. In the month of August, our pastor, Alison Patton, is on vacation, and so the deacons are leading all of the worship. Their theme during the month is letters during COVID. Letters to the church, love letters, challenging letters, personal letters. In some weeks, we'll use Paul's second letter to the Corinthians as our base scripture. In August, worship will be held every Saturday at 10 o'clock right here in the woods, face to face. And then on Sunday at 10 o'clock, you can join us on the Facebook page of Socrates Congregational Church or getting the weekly email we send around. Now, if you're not yet receiving this weekly email, please send your email to Linda Agin, A-G-I-N-L, A-G-I-N-L at optonline.net. And then at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, join us for coffee hour on Zoom which is being coordinated by Bob Mitchell, our senior usher. This Sunday, we're very delighted to welcome to Coffee Hour, Pastor Richard Williams and men from Pivot Ministries in Bridgeport. And they will share with us what is happening in their lives during this extraordinary situation of COVID. Our church will host a blood drive on August 14th, probably down in Hoskins Hall, actually inside the building. In order to give blood, please send a message to the Red Cross blood drive and give your name and then show up here to give blood at the church. That's on Friday, August 14th. We're having a second concert in the parking lot, and that's on Sunday, August 9th at 6 p.m. The group playing is called Accidental Breakdown. Personally, I've not heard them, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of fun. I'm seeing people loving them. Please come along and join us for that 6 p.m. on August 9th. Just bring a chair and enjoy. It's free of charge. Arrive a little bit early so as to set up the chairs with spaces uh, before that concert. Homes with Hope, another of our mission partners, is now in need of lunch food. We have been allocated three dates, August 17th, August 24th, August 31st. Just prepare 20 separate lunch boxes. No fish, no nuts, but all other food Welcome in the lunchbox, separate, separately packaged, and these are delivered to Gillespie Centre between 10 and 11 o'clock of that day. Please let Michelle Dorio know which dates you can do. Over the years, our church has always supported Homes with Hope, and now especially in this crisis, they need us more than ever. Bridgeport Rescue Mission has another church helping at Farmer's Market this week, but we will be asked to help the following week, and I'll announce that next week for the following Thursday. Do you know that the pantry of Bridgeport Rescue Mission has tripled, tripled in the last week? The need is phenomenal, and everywhere we look, we find the same story over and over. We are living in a major crisis situation. So these are the announcements. Let's in a moment of silence prepare 
our hearts and our minds and our spirits for worship. Hear these words from the prophet Isaiah and from the psalmist. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. The Lord reigns, he is clothed with majesty the Lord is clothed with strength. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Let us pray. Lord of all creation, happy creation, singing and clapping creation, we too would worship you. Lord of majesty and strength, giver of the warmth of the sun, the coolness of the sea and the refreshing breeze of wind, we worship you. Majestic Lord, we are delighted this morning to be called your children, your family. In the face of the Lord Jesus, we see you loving, forgiving, always calling us to a closer friendship. Majestic Lord, our lives are often far from glorious. We confess that we have not always gone your way but our way. We have not always recognized the treasures you give us moment by moment. The simple smile even behind a COVID mask. The exquisite beauty of a fallen leaf on a rock. Bird song, happy, never ending. Majestic Lord, please open our eyes to see and hear and smell and touch all of your treasures. And even in our hearts, rekindle the gift of faith in each one of us. In the face of the Lord Jesus, we know forgiveness. We know acceptance. We know peace. Smile, Jesus, smile. Warm our hearts and surprise us again with your new agenda for each one of us. Majestic Lord, Lord of all strength and goodness, thank you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This is a reading from one of the first letters of Paul. To the Corinthians. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and he said, To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, call to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that is every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. As you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the very end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and there is no dissension among you but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me directly
that some have said, I belong to Paul, while others say, I belong to the apostles, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Good morning, Sagata. Good morning. My name is Ann Patterson. I'm a deacon here at Saugatuck Church, and uh, I am privileged to be here this morning. I um, am having, I'm in the middle of having cataract surgery, so one eye sees and one eye doesn't. <laughs> so it makes reading interesting, but uh, anyway, the rest of it should be fixed next week, and uh, that'll be done. So I have a letter to you, dear Saugatuck Church. In this time of Kova, everything is upside down. The things we were used to five months ago aren't happening anymore. People aren't going to work. People are having kids home from school. They're not commuting. They don't have jobs. They don't have food. They don't have paychecks. People are getting sick. People are dying, whether it's Kova or old age, living with senior housing. I have known several people in the last few months that have passed away, not of Kova, but of other things. Life is changing. Life is all different. I used to run around. I used to go out the door. I used to go to this meeting. I used to go to this store. I used to do all these things. Not anymore. I can't go to church and go in the sanctuary anymore. I can't get close to my friends. And I, I read a, a devotional this morning. I can't get any hugs or give them, and I love hugs. And uh, you know, it's it's the kind of thing that just turns your whole life upside down. It doesn't feel right. It isn't like I have had it in order all this time. And um, it, it's almost like an affliction. It's almost like a sickness not Kova, but just the upset and, and the change. As a human being, I don't like change. I want it to stay just the same so that I can actually put it in order and have some control over it. In these circumstances, I have no control. And um, I, I have no control of who goes to the grocery store when. I didn't go to the grocery store for the first two months this was going on because my gracious roommate did it for me and so I didn't even go out and I certainly didn't go anywhere there were lots of people and I still don't because I don't believe it's safe for me. Um, all these things that I'll talk about this morning are, are really my experience, strength and hope and you may or may not agree, I, you know, that's it's just where I'm coming from at the time. The first month or two that we were confined I just stayed home. I didn't know what to do with myself. I'm not good at staying home. I've always run all over the place and done all sorts of things. It never once occurred to me in all my years to sit still and to stay home. Wasn't easy. But you know what I found? Rather liked it. <laughs> I rather thought, hmm, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to do anything. And I, the, after two weeks, I thought, this isn't any good. I was taking a shower at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe, and doing this, you know, and I thought, i got to have some sort of order. So I started out by, i got to get up, i got to take my walk, i got to shower and dress, and i got to eat before noon. I mean, I'm not putting any pressure on myself here. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But I needed some kind of a guide because all my guides and what I was used to was wrong. Um, I had lost a lifestyle. It, it was mine. Um, I, I just didn't know what to do with myself. I, I was scared to go out. I was scared to be with people. I still am, frankly, but I'm not panicked anymore. And um, it's interesting because I've watched all of us you know, the first shock is, oh my God, we're dying. You know, I'm going to get sick and die. And uh, yeah, we will someday, but I don't know if it's going to be today. 
um, but used to the idea that something's different and I have no control over it. And neither does anybody else. The second thing is I had to get used to a different rhythm in my life. Instead of all this running around that I love to do, I have to admit, I really had to sit still. I really had to use my time some different way. And um, I, those of you who know me know I don't like to write. I, I'm very dyslexic, so I can't spell and my sentence structure is non-existent most of the time. And I'll run on and on and on or I'll say two words and stop. So writing is not a form that I like to use. So, um, but I thought I have all this time. I have my little computer and uh, I'll write stories. And so I started writing stories. Now, th the premise is nobody's ever gonna read them, so I don't have to worry about the spelling. And, um, you know, my grandchildren might like to see them someday just for whatever. And, uh, I, I have 35 to 40, 40 stories written and I'm stuck right now so uh, anyway but do you know how much time it takes to sit down and write a couple of pages of old history or some kind of story it takes a while so it used up time in some ways it helped me adjust to the new norm you know, the, the not going out, the not running around, having more time at home, having more quiet time, having more time for meditation, having more time for reading. I love to read and uh, I have lots of time to do that. So anyway, so slowly but surely after a couple of months, you know, things kind of, the panic left, the worry left, and it was just, okay, we can do this. Then, and now it's been five months, I guess. And guess what? Saga Tuck Church, we're out here in the woods having people, and it's lovely. I don't think I ever realized how much I missed seeing people's faces. You know, when you can only see this far, you don't know if they're smiling or frowning or growling or doing whatever they're doing. And <laughs> anyway, it, it's, it's kind of disorienting not to be able to see people's expressions. And I miss the seeing the faces, I miss the touch as well. I'm used to holding hands to say the Lord's Prayer. I'm used to hugs. I'm used to physical contact. And it's not possible right now under these circumstances. I read a devotion the other day and it said, I've had four hugs in four months, you know, and, or touches, she didn't say hugs, touches. And it was because of medical things or taking a temperature or, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't warm and fuzzy at all. So anyway, all these things. I want to tell you something. All the things that I used to do outside of church pretty well stopped. You know, we could Zoom them. But Zooming a, a, a meeting or, or friends or something just isn't, for me, the same. So anyway, so when church semi-opened so that we could gather, you know, in the open air, face-to-face, -face, masks and chairs, distant and all that stuff, oh, it was wonderful. I started to breathe again and think, oh, there are people out there, isn't this wonderful? So anyway, so slowly but surely after time, even in this severe deprivation, I'm adjusting. Whether I like it or not, I'm adjusting. So, and I figured out how to go to the, for me, how to go to the grocery store. I'm not a morning person, so early old people's hours don't work for me. But six to seven o'clock on a Sunday, <laughs> nobody's in the stores. It's a great time to shop. I think there were five customers in the store the other day. So, here we are. And here's church. And here's what's happened to me. Saturday, taping a service. I like this. I like being out in the woods. I love this place. And in the garden, you know, <laughs> to, meet, to meet with the group and, and talk about loss and what's going on in our lives. And um, just having a friend meet me, 
do you know there are no people here on this property for the most part except the dog park all day long all night long so if a friend and I come down here masks and chairs and all that stuff and distance we can sit in the garden and talk as long as we like and nobody's around we're not putting anybody in danger and we don't have to worry about dear old Covis we can put Covis on the back shelf and have that personal face-to-face -face contact that I am so hungry for. Um, lots of, uh, you know, I can't read, so this is getting interesting. Um, one, one of the things about, uh, about the scripture that I was fascinated with was the world in the first century after Christ died was very disturbed and it was disturbed because the apostles said that Jesus was the Messiah and other people said he wasn't. And so there was a tremendous conflict of belief systems at that stage in the game. And Paul's, among other apostles, going to Corinth was to tell the people his experience, strength and hope, knowing Jesus, what had happened, the resurrection, the fact that he was here, he was the Messiah, and it caused all sorts of problems all through the area because people were preaching, this is different. They would go, I was fascinated, Willie was nice enough to give me some scripture background, and um, they would go to the synagogue wherever they were visiting. Of course, they walked, you know, this is a long walk. Um, and they would teach and preach in the synagogue. And some people got very upset and would arrest them and put them in jail. And sometimes they got out and sometimes they didn't. And Paul was delayed going to Corinth because of all the upset. All the, the world's upside down. It just isn't working like we're used to. And I think in our world today, the world isn't working like we're used to. So guess what we have to do? Change. Oh, my favorite word. Anyway. So we have to change. So what are we doing? Sunday Duck Church, you got Sunday on Facebook and Zoom. You got, I forgot what happens on Monday. Everybody rests, maybe. Um, Tuesday, what's Tuesday? Bible study. Yes. Interface. The interfaith. The interfaith. The interfaith. Wednesday's Bible study. Wednesday night is centering prayer. Thursday's Rob Bell, at least it has been, so a, a book study basically. Friday I think we have off. Saturday we tape and Sunday we sing. I'm doing more at church than I probably ever have. And I'm going, wow, this is fabulous. You know, this kind of interaction is, is amazing to me. And it fills that need that has not had that connection in all this time. Um, I, I took the scripture <laughs> and, and went someplace with it that um, really wasn't indicated in the scripture, so I'm just going to tell you the story. Um, when Marty and Alan were here as co-pastors, they were very much um, trying to promote small groups of different kinds so that we could have personal contact with other members of the church that we didn't know. And one of the things we did, and, and Lindsay Huddleston also taught me about things in the church and history that I was not familiar with, and one of them was Pentecost. And Lindsay had been given from her church that she left a flag, I'll call it, and it, it was a rope with a red and yellow silk, silk piece of fabric that when you ran down the two aisles in a congregational church, it was perfect length, it would flap and it would make a noise like wind. And it was about Pentecost. It was about the coming of the Spirit. And I think, at least in my mind, that what's happened for me to some degree is the Spirit has taken over what we're missing in what we used to be. And um, the Spirit's alive and well. I mean, look at all of you here. This is amazing. One pastor goes on vacation 
we need 20 people to do what she does in a week. And I mean, I am so impressed. I'm so grateful to her for all of this and, and all of the participation and all the willingness that all of us have. I mean, it's just different. And I have the feeling that because of this wonderful caring for each other, being nice to each other, giving a smile, even if you can't see the smile, a kind word, a just hi, you know, to, to anybody you see, is just like touching. It's just like touching. And uh, it's touching spiritually, not physically. And I think, I think that's what we need to do at this stage in the game. I have all sorts of things here I can't read. <laughs> but anyway, I put something in, in 16 font or whatever they call it so that I can see this one. This is a favorite. This is a real favorite uh, scripture of mine. Marty used it after her dad had died. And she said, it, it, it'll be familiar to most of you, but she said, for this, this is the comfort for me for my life. And I love this. It's John 14, 25 to 27. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And please feel blessed by the Holy Spirit that's alive and well in this crazy world of ours under these circumstances. And give that spirit and that connection to anybody and everybody you see. And hopefully you will bring some of the peace of Christ to them that day. Amen. Amen. Let's spend a few moments in silence as we reflect on Anne's words. So now it's time to offer our prayers, our personal prayers for ourselves, for relationships that are broken and need to be mended, for things in our lives that need to change drastically, for others whom we love and care for, and for our country, and for our world, which is really on the ropes at the moment, at the edge of chaos. It's only just beginning to dawn on all of us the implications of COVID, the financial implications and the hunger implications of COVID. So in our prayers, we'll be thinking of all these situations. And when I finish praying, I will say, please listen, Lord, your children are praying. And I invite you to offer your prayers. For Jesus, prayer was not just part of his life, it was his life. John 5, 19, he says an extraordinary thing. The son can do nothing for himself, but what he sees the father do. The son can do nothing. This is Jesus speaking. It's extraordinary, amazing humility. And that is why Jesus had to leave the crowds. And that is why Jesus had to leave the disciples and go to a lonely place. And that is why he had to spend time with the Father. He is saying that he is helpless without that daily walk with God. One of Jesus' favorite names for God was him who sent me. Him who sent me. Jesus knew that he was sent. And he had to maintain that relationship with God every moment of every day. And then he turns to you and me in John 15 verse 5. And he said, telling us that we need to develop that relationship with God every day as he does. In order to be effective as a congregation and as individuals. 
So let us open our hearts and minds to prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we do not come into your presence because we are never out of your presence. But often we do not recognize your presence and we're sorry and we ask you to help us to be more open to your promptings, to your ways of speaking to us and with us. Please open our hearts, rekindle our faith, draw close to us, change us. We thank you for this extraordinarily beautiful place that we can worship you in all places, in the pharmacy line or the supermarket checkout. We will worship you at all times and in all places. We pray specifically this morning for the implications of this virus COVID. The implications for people's lives which are being turned upside down, changed and in many cases actually destroyed. Lord, we pray for all who are taking the hit, who are suffering, who are hungry. And so help us, Lord, to respond as we have done during these announcements earlier, to respond to our mission partners and to work with them to help and to heal and to feed. And now, Lord, we offer all our prayers to you. Please be attentive for your children are praying. Lord, hear all these prayers spoken and unspoken from the depths of our hearts and begin to use us in surprising ways. Hear us now as we say the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught to us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So our worship is ended, so that we can respond to all these notices that we heard earlier and respond to our mission partners and go out into the world and help in every way that we can. Be at peace. And as you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.